Cures Everything, week two NFL recap brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can watch, wager on any of the games down at any of their five, soon to be six, sportsbook locations. Go check them out at tunicatravel.com. You can also get anything that you need to know about the games, about the odds, about whatever at winningcureseverything.com. Chris, let's just uh, let's fire this thing off. All right. Pat, Pat Mahomes may be the greatest quarterback that there has ever been in the history of the world. Right? He looks pretty exciting. He's, uh, he's pretty good. He's like, like Ryan Fitzpatrick might have something to say Andy about Andy Reid has waited his entire life for. That's exactly what – everybody questioned whether or not Alex Smith was, you know, why, why would you get rid of a guy that you know, you know, that, that has taken you to the playoffs, that, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But the reason you do that is because this guy is a baller. Like, you just know he's a baller, right? Andy, Andy Reid, this, this whole move makes me so excited, though. This is a gambler's move right here. He could make the playoffs for the rest of his life with Alex Smith. He yeah. could win the NFC or the AFC, AFC West, compete with – I mean, he's owned the Patriots the last couple of years with Smith, and – and he could live an unbelievable life that's going to put him into the Hall of Fame and compete for Super Bowls. Well, Alex said, Smith was, you know was leading the league in, in pass right. efficiency last year. He finally he said, had weapons around yeah. him. And he said, I think this kid's better. I think this kid's more explosive. I'm going to I'm gonna gamble on giving up all of that. Yeah. And, and we're going to roll with this. He's dominated the AFC West. And yeah. Now it's not even close. It's scary. He's 38 out of 55, 582 yards with 10 touchdowns, zero interceptions. It's his second year in the league. And look, 10 touchdowns through two weeks has never been done in NFL history. That is Sunday against the Steelers, he had more touchdowns than he had incompletions. He threw six TDs, he only had five incompletions. How crazy is that? Well, it's about as crazy as the Steelers being favored at Tampa Bay on Monday night. So, but we'll we'll get to that in our picks, right? We'll we'll get to that. Sure. Uh, let's jump into Ryan Fitzpatrick or Fitz Magic, right? All right. He's the NFC MVP leader right now. Who the fuck uh, is Jameis Winston? Oh my God, this guy! Look, Tampa Bay moves to two and zero with the twenty seven twenty one win over the Philadelphia Eagles, who are. Very excited to be getting Carson Wentz back in week three. Uh, but Tampa Bay, behind Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, this team looks like they like each other, like they are comfortable. It, look, Fitzpatrick coming out wearing Deshaun Jackson's uh, clothes at that press conference God. was bananas. Absolutely insane. But they look like they're having fun. So, so here's – no, they're, they're having fun. Winning is fun. Scoring a lot of points is fun. Here's the thing that shocks me. The dude put up these big numbers against the Eagles, who we both agree we think have two of the top – one of the top three defenses in all the country, if not the best overall defense in the country. Oh, yeah. I thought they were going to come down to earth, nothing against Fitzpatrick or the Bucks offense, but just because I assumed, man, the Saints defense is just garbage – and this is a real defense that won a Super Bowl. Like, these guys are no joke. You can't just go push them around. Then they went in there and pushed them around. Yeah, it's it's not that the, the Saints defense he is garbage four either. He's to four different people. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's spreading the ball around. He, it's not this like is, he's just got one guy he's feeding. We're, we're talking about how good uh, Mahomes looked because he's thrown for 582 yards. Yeah. Fitzpatrick is 48 of 61. He's only had 13 incompletions on the season. For 819 yards with eight touchdowns and one pick. I don't, it's I don't get it. Just, it's just insane. Um, the, the, the magic questions are, can he keep it up? Because he is old. Man, what is he, 38? Does uh, his 14th year in the league. Golly. So, so 36, and 37. Probably somewhere around there. And yeah. then the other thing is, is, there's no way they go back to Jameis, right? Not I mean, right now. The So, offshore odds have got this set up where I think it's like Fitzpatrick remains the starter at minus 400. 
right now. Okay. So it it looks like it's going to stay Fitzpatrick, and I cannot say that I blame him. Like, well, no, why would... I talked about this before the season even started. Yeah, why would you ever for, bring him forget, back? Forget about Winston at all, or, or Fitzpatrick at all. Let's say he's just garbage. Jameis Winston is not good. He's not who you want to build around. And the thing that I I have learned most about watching Bill Belichick run teams is as soon as you feel like you have a losing hand, you fold it. You don't care that the guy still has something productive to you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you can't yeah. win with him, you fold, and you yeah. just move on. And if you're bad for a year, that's fine. You figure it out the next year. But you don't keep paying somebody who you know you can't win with. I, I would have moved on from Jameis already. There have been people that are talking, you know, are they going to put him on the trade block? What, what would his value even be? I don't even know what that would be. Uh, I'm sure he'd be useful as a backup somewhere, right? Like, that's the only thing that I can think of. I, I don't know that anybody in the league would actually trust him right now. Um, and it, it definitely makes him look bad that he has had all these weapons and everything in Tampa Bay, and right. Fitzpatrick comes in, and he just looks amazing immediately. This late this late 30-year-old man with a big-ass beard from Harvard comes in and just makes him look foolish. Yes. Yes. You've, uh, you've got that right. You you brought up something interesting that'll move us into uh, the next topic. Uh, you talked about folding a losing hand. Vontae Davis quits <laughs> at the mid, like just at halftime. Doesn't even come back out for the second half. He was I'm inactive out. week one, and he comes into the locker room at halftime. He's a little slower. He's getting beat on some things, right? And he's just like, peace. I'm out. Like, Not does this surprise you? Would you have done this? No, no. I, I, I wish I had this kind of money. Like, that's what I wish. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, oh, okay. No, now, if I had that kind of money, there are plenty of jobs that I would quit just midstream on. But but I, I don't know. He, signed, I he signed a $5 million deal this year. Now, he's walking away from it, which means he well, made right. He's not going to get paid hardly any of it. Yeah, which, so he's walking away from that money, which means he's made enough money to be able to walk away from $5 million to play for one season. Well, I mean, now, we, now, I don't know about that. He, There's a really good chance if he was that slow and getting beat that bad that he felt like, I'm going to get cut. And I don't really want to get embarrassed by being cut. But wait till the game's over with, man. I mean, finish yeah. the game with you guys. Pull a hammy. Tell him I can't go back in there. And then after the game, just say, look, I, I've lost it, and I'm out. But he just walked on him. Yeah, that was uh, – that that's, it was a weird situation. When when I saw that come across the timeline, it was like <laughs> Bill's player retires at halftime. It's like, oh, God, they've got so many things going wrong up there. Uh, talking about things going wrong, Daniel Carlson – is out of a job after going 0 for 3 uh, in kicking against the Green Bay Packers on Sunday. 29 to 29 ties. So all the people that had the Vikings minus one, one and a half, not happy campers. Um, they bring in uh, Dan Bailey. All right. But, no one wants to talk about kickers. Kickers suck, and we don't want to talk about kickers. But we don't want to talk about this game. Okay. Let's talk about the let, game. All right. So let me ask you a question. Not an ask question. I think the media is getting something wrong. They're just getting something really wrong. You cannot like the the, the, the rule, okay? The the personal foul, roughing the passer, unnecessary roughness that that uh, that was that was on Kirk Cousins for uh, when he threw that interception would have ended the game, whatever, gave him the first down instead they drive down um, and, and tie the game, whatnot. All right? Right. You can you cannot like the rule, but everyone keeps saying well, I don't know what they're supposed to do. It's pretty clear. You can't put all your body weight on him. He hit him with his shoulder, clean, perfect hit. And then he drove him to the ground. Now, because he didn't land flat on him, doesn't mean he didn't drive his shoulder into him, which drove him into the ground. I don't like the rule. I'm not a fan of the rule. But let's not act like it wasn't called correctly. It was absolutely called correctly. He drove all of his body weight onto Kirk Cousins, in that play. Other than that, it was a clean hit. I don't like the rule, but nobody gave Green Bay that game away. Yeah, no, they – everybody knows what the rule is, and you're right. That's right. You're right. 
And at this point, there's no sense in whining about this anymore. We understand what it is. It's Look, you're going to have to count on your cornerbacks, your defensive backs, to make plays in the secondary. I, and, you know, you, you can rush and bring pressure on these quarterbacks, but if you get a chance to tee off on them, you got to do it very, uh, very gingerly, right? Well, I mean, I, what they want you to do, I don't know how easy it is because I haven't tackled anybody in a long, long time and have no desire to try, okay? <laughs> but, but what they want is when you hit them, roll, twist. Yeah. If you spin and you turn so you're not driving your shoulder with all of your force into them on the ground, that's all they want you to do is to make some sort of effort to fall sideways. Now, I know a lot about falling sideways. I went skiing one time in my life, snow skiing, and I got pretty good at going down. And, and, and I, don't, I don't understand all the physics or anything. I know this. Big boy going in one direction down a snow hill picks up a lot of speed the farther he goes. But I could not stop. Did not know how to stop. And so I just got where I got dangerously close to a tree, and I fell. That's all you have to do. When you slam into him, just fall. Just fall the other way. Turn to the left or turn to the right and fall. And everyone keeps saying, well, they're not thinking about that. How, how much thought goes into falling? Like, you're going to get penalized if you don't. But I think if they give any effort whatsoever in making it look like they tried, I think they're going to get the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, when they, they, they won't get like caught. They don't try at all. They're getting no benefit of the doubt. They're getting the flag every time. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, let's move off of that. Let's talk about 0-2 teams because I'm sure everybody likes right. to talk about losers, right? Uh, sure. Which 0-2 team can still make the playoffs? I'm going to give you the list, okay? The Bills, the Texans, the Raiders, the Giants, the Lions, the Cardinals, and now the Seahawks. Can any of those teams still make the playoffs? There's about a 12% chance for 0-2 teams to make it. The only one that I could ever think of is if the Giants can do something with their offensive line between now and then, and it's only because that division looks winnable. Nobody in that division looks great, and, and everybody in that division has one loss. They've got two. They're only one game back of everybody. So that that is the – only team that I think has a chance at all. Well, I mean, what about the uh, the Texans? No, no, I think the Jaguars are real, and, and yeah. I don't I don't think the Texans are getting to nine or ten wins. Um, all right, so we'll take this back to Patrick Mahomes. Let's let's be real careful. We've got two games, two great games, and he earns all the accolades that he's getting right now. Okay, Watson had four unbelievable games that made us think this guy is the MVP of the league last year. It was him or Carson Wentz before he went down. He don't look like that now. Well, once the NFL gets something on you, sometimes those numbers go down and they go down quickly. So let's, let's just be real careful. Well, Enjoy the other the side balls. of this, like the other side of this is Watson is coming off of an injury and Mahomes uh, hasn't been injured yet. I don't, I don't but, think the injury has anything to do with why Watson looks bad. I think the NFL has got his number. They know how to slow him down. They know how to contain him. And, and a lot of that, he's probably handcuffed by Bill O'Brien. I mean, we're going to get to a segment later about that. But, yeah. 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 We, uh, we will definitely get to that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. that may, Maybe the Seahawks, but I don't, I don't think they've got enough in the tank right now to be able to make the playoffs. Uh the Cardinals are really bad. The Lions, I'd like to think that Patricia could get it turned around, but I don't think he's going to this year. It's going to take, it's gonna take time. And, and the, yeah. the problem with Patricia is, is they're going from a coach that won nine games last year and all the players loved to a coach that's 0-2 and, and a lot of the players hate. You know, yeah. Patricia's doing that, coach him hard. He's not a player's coach. He didn't care if you're his friend or not. When you jump off sides, you run laps. When you fumble, you run laps. When you make a mistake, he makes you run. And these players aren't liking that. Word out of yeah. control. And so, and so they're not, you know, playing hard for him. At some point, if your ownership and management, you've got to figure out, 
are we okay with a guy coaching our guys hard and holding them to a standard and making them better? Or they're just not going to play for him. We got to get somebody in the guys will play for. And I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I think, like, obviously he's going to stick around for this year and probably well, yeah, next year. This year and next year. But whether that lasts past that, we'll see. Um, let's talk about the Titans beating the, uh, the Texans. And, okay. and we don't have to spend long on this, but – the Titans were without their top three tackles, without Marcus Mariota, without Delaney Walker. Uh, yeah, they played at home, but there, – There's no way they should have won this game. Yeah, it didn't make any sense. It, it does let you know why Mike Malarkey was fired and why Vrabel was hired, right? It's, yep. This was coaching. Like a hundred percent. Vrabel is going to be the second coming of Belichick. Or, or yeah, Andy and I don't Brady. think he will be. But, but – he outcoached yeah. Bill O'Brien. Yeah, big time. Um, the fake punt was wonderful to watch. Uh, where they throw it over to uh, Kevin Baird for the touchdown. Yeah. Um, I mean, it just everything about this seemed goofy, right? Like the the clock mismanagement for Bill O'Brien's team at the end of the game. It, I. I I just could not understand what was happening here. You know, they, they line up uh, – because they've got Blaine Gabbert, they line up Derrick Henry in the Wildcat. They even let him throw out of the Wildcat. Uh, they don't let Blaine Gabbert beat them, right? Like, I'm not talking about the Texans. I'm talking about the Titans. Didn't let yeah. their own quarterback beat them. They kind of took the ball out of his hands. And it was the smartest thing that they could have ever done. It was just well, yeah, a, it's what, an I mean, amazing game. Jacksonville did up until Blake figured out how to play quarterback recently. But most all of last year, they just said, we're not going to let you you mess this up. So You uh, you bring up a, an interesting thing because we'll move on to that next topic. Blake Bortles whipped your Patriots. Yeah, yeah. That uh, was they're insane. They're bad at defense. Uh, that's yeah, it, and, and that's what's crazy is, you know, we talked about Deshaun Watson and whatnot. And we thought, the okay, best, well, the best after we won. Rusher, Fowler uh, went out first quarter of the game. That hurts. Yeah. I mean, it's one player, but, I mean, he's, he's, it the, makes best a difference. Defensive, he's the best defensive player we got. So, yeah. that kind of sucks. When your defense is already really bad, you take the best piece away, it doesn't help. Well, the Jaguars uh, did not even have Leonard Fournette, and Bortles' numbers were 29 out of 45, 377 yards, four touchdowns. Can't cover uh, it. Hey, there. Tell me this: the Jaguars' wide receiver core, Didi Westbrook, uh, Dante Moncrief, Cole, Safarian Jenkins. That's like a sneaky good wide no, receiver no, core. No, it's not. No, don't say. I'm no, it's from not, yeah. from this it's angle. Not. No. <laughs> it's not. You're wrong. It's not. They're so you're not telling me good. that Blake Bortles is actually good. a good quarterback? They're not going to look that good against any other team except for maybe when they play the Colts twice. <laughs> There's no other defense they're going to play this that bad. They're just not. How are your Pats going to fix this? Well, they'll fix it. They'll make moves. Bill always makes moves. The first Let's... four games, the first four games of the season, for the last four years, everybody has buried them. And they're done. This is the year they fall off. This is the year Bill forgets it all. This is the year. This is the year. <laughs> Every year, it's the same thing. Every year. Then the AFC Championship game, they're in the Super Bowl. They win the Super Bowl. One of those three things is going to happen. So, it's the first four weeks. He's figuring it out. He's going to make five to seven moves between now and week eight or nine, and this is all going to be fine. Now, one of the moves was uh, was to get Josh Gordon from your Browns. That's right. That's right. That's How do you right. feel about it? I feel pretty good about it. Now, listen, I'm not getting too excited. We'll know quickly if within two weeks if Josh Gordon is still on this team or not. Okay? But if he's fine. If he's not injured and he's healthy and he can come in and he can play, he can be dangerous. And if yes. he can't, and if he doesn't get right, we'll know quickly and he'll be cut almost immediately and it'll cost them nothing. Nothing. They traded a fifth round pick and if he doesn't start, if he doesn't start 10 games this season, okay, then they get a seventh round pick back. So where the Pats usually pick from where the Cleveland usually picks, that fifth to seventh round pick's not a whole lot different. It's about no, the sixth it's, round. it's the sixth round in between there. 
So there you go. Not too bad. Let's talk about the Rams defense, and we'll uh, we'll close up with this and uh, and one other thing. Rams defense has been bonkers this year. Uh, is it because of opponents, or are they actually that good? They uh, the past six quarters, they have given up zero points, only two hundred forty four yards. They've had sixteen drives against them and only given up eleven first downs. But here's the, the, here's the difference. Take the Arizona game out. No, that's what I was going to say. They've only had two sacks on 69 dropbacks. So they're not beating teams the way that you would think with Sue and Donald back there. So just take Arizona out. Arizona's garbage. garbage. And the Raiders are garbage, right? Well, the Raiders aren't good. They're an offensively good team. But, you know, they shut them down in the fourth quarter. Okay. All right. But they scored on them in the first couple of quarters. So. Yeah. They could not cooks. So. No, nah, they they couldn't early, uh, but they they figured out how to in the second half. But that's all he uh, had. That's all you got to stop is one guy, and he's a mediocre tight end in the NFL. Let's uh, let's close out on this. Okay. The Falcons actually scored touchdowns in the red zone against the Panthers. Were you surprised by this? <laughs> um, I was surprised a little. Panthers Panthers look beat up. Yeah. After Cam took that shot, he was not the same the rest of the game. He probably should not have been playing quarterback the rest of the game. I uh, I think I agree with you. Uh, the Falcons and, and that that was a dirty ass play. It's just all there is yeah. to it. It was absolutely flat out taking a shot at a guy trying to knock him out of the game. Well, and and I feel like people do that to Cam Newton every week. Yeah, like oh, we, yeah. we don't have to rehash this uh, this argument, but because he is bigger. For whatever, it's it's kind of like the hack a shack thing where yeah. NBA refs just wouldn't call fouls, and, you know, on players trying to guard Shaq. He, like he it's the same thing here. Yeah, okay. so, him, and, him and him and him and Gronk are the same guy. Gronk doesn't get pass interference calls against him at all because he's just so much bigger than the guys covering him. Cam yeah. doesn't doesn't get the roughing roughing penalties. He doesn't get the respect that all the rest of the quarterbacks get. They say he's a runner when really he's running back trying to make passes. Um, and he's still getting hit. Uh, he's just he's just never going to get those calls. It's obscene. Um, I don't I don't know how to police the game if the refs won't do it. So no, that's that's the crazy thing. There's I don't know what the bias is. I I really don't understand it. Um, but yeah, so the the stats are they scored four times in the red zone, uh, two touchdown passes, one to Calvin Ridley, uh, one to Hooper, um, and then two Matt Ryan runs into the end zone. Here's the deal. Uh, in nine red zone attempts this season, the Falcons have 35 points. In nine red zone attempts this season for the San Francisco 49ers, uh, in Kyle Shanahan, they have 36 points. Really not that different this year. And it's only through two weeks. Obviously, we'll see what else happens. But Kyle uh, Shanahan doesn't have you know. anybody as close to good as Devontae Freeman, Tevin Coleman in the backfield, or Julio Jones. That's just it. You're talking about three massive skill players that they don't have in San Francisco. And they're not yeah. close. They're not, there's not a receiver that's on the planet with, with Julio. And neither one of the running backs that are playing right now for the 49ers, they're doing fine. They're not garbage. They're playing well. But, but they're not Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman. No, so you're, you're good. right. You're right. All right, that's going to wrap up the uh, the recap. Remember, go check out tunicatravel.com. Go check out winningcureseverything.com. We will be back later this week with, um, oh, gosh, we've got picks and previews and all kind of mess, right? So pay attention to the YouTube channel. Pay attention to Facebook. Pay attention to Twitter, all the wonderful things. We will see you guys later this week.